Good morning, folks. As we watch some solar tornadoes dance onto the Earth-facing desk, let me remind website members that it is Saturday, and we've got Fly on the Wall coming to SuspiciousObservers.org in just a few hours. Heading over to SpaceWeatherNews.com, we see the flaring uptick break into M range. No big CME, and the eruption was on the eastern limb. But this leaves us with a ton of sunspots and a reason to keep watching. The big northern array still has no magnetic complexity, but the smaller group that popped the M-flare on the south appears to have delta potential, if not that level of complexity already. That makes the sunspots the primary eruption threat over the two small filaments facing Earth, one north and one south, even if they release they're likely to be polar vectored and miss Earth by a long way. Top space weather story is actually in the solar wind. I believe that is the coronal hole solar wind stream kicking in. The density leads these and then the speed follows. Electron flux already showing that we're taking a shock wave. I expect at least a level 1 geomagnetic storm from that departing dark opening there. And we actually have the next one visible already. Left side, transequatorial dark patch is a positive coronal hole. And not only are the coronal magnetic fields staying far away from it, but on ISWA, we can discern some strong force to that opening. Since we are between quake factors, however, seismicity has dropped out. Unusual location rumbles only. Owen fracture zone usually hits in swarms. But how about some long-term quake news? Looking back to May 30th, while the deep Japan quake caused no damage and got far less press than the Nepal earthquake, it was definitively more powerful, possibly the largest earthquake since April 11th, 2012. And just like with that quake, the 2011 Japan disaster and the Chile disaster from 2010, the southern polar fields peaked in magnetic force. In this case, just three days after the first polar force spike of this new cycle, we took that massive shake. Let's also note that another update is down there below, and we're still waiting to see if the north is going to go negative again. Also, I might take a moment to mention that while the end of solar maximum is about halfway through the sunspot cycle, if you go by the polar reversal cycle, which actually drives those sunspots, we are beginning the new cycle now. Top article today goes to the NINS. Captured shots of nitrogen rotating 100 billion times per second which boggles my mind. Interesting take on the particle wave battle within these types of observations. Let's get some discussion on this in the comment section today. Let's run down the weather as one storm is weakening here after refusing to leave this party. Then, the northern Philippines is on alert, followed by the areas north of the South China Sea and up to Japan. That is three tropical storm systems lined up in the western Pacific. Not much changes in the United States. The Gulf heat and moisture is going to cause severe weather again tonight in this region, while also delivering what the northern system needs to put some water down up there. I'll keep the precipitable water overlay on so we can see the convergence from the Atlantic low there. That is the top alert for this region tonight. Then, we'll come down to the southwest Pacific. That same system hasn't quite left New Zealand yet, Otherwise, we just see a weak convergence bouncing below the island nation there. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.